When we make a genomic library, we're really cloning large pieces of DNA that will eventually represent an entire genome, which means we're not merely looking at the transcripts in the form of cDNAs, we're actually looking at the genes that would have produced those transcripts. So we need to talk a little bit about genomic libraries, the making of which is the art of cloning very large pieces of DNA. So here's how it's done. First of all, you extract total DNA from cells under conditions where you make very high molecular weight genomic DNA. Now this is a bit of a trick in itself. You may recall that one of the reasons that Rosalind Franklin was able to make beautiful X-ray crystallographs of DNA that Watson and Crick used to decipher the structure of DNA was the fact that Maurice Wilkins had developed a way to extract very highly purified high molecular weight DNA. Since it took a while to increasingly purify big molecules of DNA, you can imagine that we need to take special care in extracting DNA to ensure that it will be high molecular weight. At that point, all you have to do is cut it with your favorite restriction endonuclease and mix it with engineered DNA from bacteriophage with compatible sticky ends, meaning cut with the same restriction endonuclease. The bacteriophage DNA will be the vector, the carrier, that's going to take the recombinant insert genomic DNA into cells where it will multiply. So a common terminology for cloning is the vector, the phage or the plasmid, which is going to carry a recombinant insert that you're actually going to study. So we mix these two together, and again, we get, if we do it right in the presence of DNA ligase, we get recombinant phage. Each again will have a different insert. Now these are very much larger fragments of DNA that can be inserted into a recombinant phage compared to cDNAs. Just to give you an idea, if a cDNA is 300 to 500 nucleotides long, representing a messenger RNA of about that length, recombinant phage can carry pieces of DNA that are 20 or even 22, 23,000 base pairs long. So you can get huge chunks of the genome into recombinant phage. And that's important because there's much more DNA that you're going to have to screen unless you can put big pieces into your recombinants, and that's what's happening here. So you have these recombinant phage DNA, now you would like to get them into cells. How is that done? Well, that relies on studies that were done in which phage were actually ripped apart. The protein coats were taken apart, the DNA was studied, the protein was studied, and in the course of doing this, it was shown possible to take the DNA of phage and the proteins you extracted and to combine those and reconstitute an infectious phage. So all we have to do is to buy off the shelf viral proteins with which you can package your DNA into active infectious phage. So we add purified bacteriophage coat proteins and you get infectious recombinant viruses as it says here. 